all right, my timing was a little my timing was a little bit off for that, so I'm just tacking this on the tail uh, to finish up the problem I started in confidence intervals. I'll probably re-record this at some point, um, but for now I just wanted to finish up this problem so you guys could see it. Okay, so I was using the score function to show the formula that we get for confidence intervals. Okay, so we have the score function. Um, let me get my ink up here, and uh, we use this score function here to relate the standard normal distribution. It turns out that if you use algebra, you multiply both sides by sigma, these cancel out, add mu to each side, and you get this over here. X equals mu plus z sigma. Right? That's and that's what we usually use, something like that for our confidence intervals. Okay. Oops. Now the way you see this on your formulas, usually it looks like this. And it's very similar. Um, and it's a, in fact just substituted stuff in. So we have x equals x bar plus or minus z alpha over 2 times sigma. <clears throat> okay, that's what you see, right? That's that's the formula. And you can see, if you look up at this distribution up here, let me try not to move too fast, that our mu up here, here, let me rewrite it up here so you can see it, x equals x bar bar plus or minus mm, z alpha over 2 sigma. Okay, now x is going to be our confidence interval, and there's two values, right? That's what this plus or minus gives us. It gives us two values. Now, the other formula we had from the score function was x equals mu plus z sigma. <clears throat> the plus or minus comes from the fact that we have a positive and a negative z, that are the same, right? 1.96 is negative. Where is that? 1.96 is negative here, and 1.96 is positive over here. Now, no matter what, because we're always going to be centered, you're always going to have, no matter what your confidence interval is, you're always going to have two z's that are the same. It's going to be plus on this side and minus on this side, which is why this is plus and minus. Mu is x bar because that's our best guess of what mu is equal to, right? We just use that as our point estimate. So that's why that becomes that. And then the z alpha over 2, well, that's just saying it's the z. If alpha is our confidence level, here it was 0 0.95, and alpha over 2 is going to be 0 0.475, which is this thing up here, right? 0 0.475. So it's pretty intuitive once you walk through it. Maybe walk through it a few times until it feels very intuitive. Okay, now this is how we construct our confidence interval. This is the intuition. This over here is the formula. And so once we know the formula and we know the intuition, um, you can just use the formula. But when you're picturing it inside your head, it's easier, I think, it's certainly easier for me to understand where it comes from. We want to find the two, we're going to find our two values of x, that's what this plus or minus gives us, such that one of them is over here and one of them is over here. And that's what it's kicking out. Okay, so we have our x bar. We have our z alpha over 2, which is zero, or is 1.96, uh, and negative 1.96, and we have our sigma. Um, what are they again? Uh, they're up here. Okay, so 325 and 60 were our x bar and our sigma. So let's do that. So now we have our x. It's going to be equal to 325 plus or minus 1.96 times uh, s, which was 60. And that's going to give us our confidence interval. Uh, oh, not S, I'm sorry, it, was, uh, it wasn't 60, it's 4.2426, so let me erase that, uh, 4.2426, uh, where are you, there you go, 4.2426, this board's getting a little messy. Okay, so switch back over to my, calcul my Excel calculations, there we go, we're going to have, ooh, that's not, that's the previous file, sorry. Alrighty, <laughs> here we go. This is the formula I'm trying to pop in. 325 plus 1.96 times 4.2426. Here we go. So we have positive. We'll do the positive one first. 325 plus 1.96 times 4.2426. And we have... 325 minus 1.996 times 4.2426. And those are going to be our two values of x. Okay? I can come back over here to my drawing, spread this out just a little bit so I can still see those numbers, and 
what I found are these two values, right? The lowest I could have for mu is about 3.16.7, <coughs> and the highest is 333.3. .3. And so that's what I can put for my answer. We were talking about rental cars, the average miles. Um, <coughs> we want to know the population mean miles driven in a rental car. We had a sample of 200. The average of 325. We knew the um, standard deviation was 60. And then what we said is, well, our best guess, mu x equals 325. Um, and then that's plus or minus something, right? It turns out that mu x then is between 316.6 or 0.7 and 333.3. Another way to see that, to write it, is to just check it what we added and subtracted, right? So we added and subtracted 1.96 times 42 uh, equals 1.96 times 4.2426. It's plus or minus 8.3. That's what this also is. So sometimes you'll see it written this way, plus or minus 8.3. It says that there's a, you know, we're 95% sure that our, we're not off by more than 8.3 points, 8.3 miles, right, with our population mean. That's what a confidence interval is. It says this is our best guess, and this is how sure we are, right? We're sure that it falls somewhere in here, 95% sure. You could do 99% sure, depending on how sure you need to be. Um, and, you can, and all that involves is changing the value of Z, right, because you're just measuring how many standard deviations out you are. Anyway, that's how you construct a confidence interval. Uh, it's stuff we've used before. Hopefully I, uh, my walkthrough helped make the intuition clear that it's just a different way to do a normal distribution problem. Um, and now we're adding value. We're making inferences about the population. right? We're making guesses about the population. So that's useful. Anyway, hope you guys enjoy. Sorry that I broke it up into two parts. Uh, and uh, yeah, Let me know if you have any questions. Bye.